Hello and welcome back to another edition of our Dark Souls 3 walkthrough for Elden Ring players. We're going to go ahead and get started right away. We're going to go ahead and start exactly where we left off last time. Spawning in at the Old King's Antechamber. Now the first thing that I want to do today is I want to grab a single item that's found within the atrium that we have been avoiding so far. Uh, I usually avoid the atrium altogether because there's a lot of these fire demons and they put up a lot of turrets and generally it's easier just to pick up the item and run away than to just kill each of them individually. So we're going to fall into the atrium, dash to the corner where the item is, and run away. Now when you're picking up the item, you have to be careful because there is a fire slime waiting to land on your head. If you pick it up from the side here, you can easily avoid that fire slime. Then you can make your way back to this hallway don't go too far in because there's a hole on the ground and you'll fall into another trap just go far enough to where none of the fire turrets can easily get you and then homeward bone out of there after you return to the bonfire we are going to spawn in on the opposite side of the atrium at the bonfire called demon ruins and if you have not spent your souls i would go ahead and spend all your souls right now because the next checkpoint is pretty far away and there's a couple difficult enemies so it's better safe than sorry at this point we're going to avoid most of the fights initially so I'm going to fall down this staircase and I am going to dash to the other side of the atrium while also trying to avoid all of the miniature sun turrets. If you get hit once or twice, it's not the end of the world as long as you make it to this hallway here. Inside of this hallway, there's going to be a few rats. This rat that started to attack me can be tricky sometimes it doesn't come straight for you most of the time it'll back away and lure you into the ground that is missing here if you do that you may end up falling into that fire lake you saw below so be careful don't let it lure you that far inside uh, we're gonna backtrack a little and there is gonna be another chamber with other rats make sure to take them all out before you continue There we go. And the game wants me to go in this direction now, and we will. But before we do that, we are going to go past this illusionary wall. And you can see this is the hole that we wanted to try to avoid when we were running away from the atrium. And we're going to go down there, but not yet. Instead, we're going to go the other direction where we are going to find one of the saddest stories in Dark Souls. And you don't get a lot of information about it in Dark Souls 3, but those who have played the first Dark Souls might recognize this obscure reference. Here you will find a human body huddled against a spider-like creature. And what the game is referencing is that of Quilana and her sister, the Fair Lady, who were two characters in Dark Souls 1. If you are unaware, both of these sisters belong to the Isolith witches, Isolith being the cornerstone and birthplace of pyromancy for Dark Souls. You first encounter Quelana years after a huge catastrophe has fallen over Isolith, and after many encounters, she pleads for your help. Ah, there you are. I was expecting you. Let us begin. Hmm. 
I have a favor to ask. My mother, the Witch of Isolith, was one of the primeval lords. Her power came from the soul that she found near the first flame. She focused this power to light a flame of her own. But she failed to control it. The flame of chaos engulfed mother and my sisters and molded them into deformed creatures. Only I escaped. And now I'm here. But my mother and sisters have been in anguish since. I beseech you. Free mother and my sisters from the flame of chaos. I cannot do it myself. I lack the strength and the bravery. But you, I realize what I am asking. But please, free their poor souls. Mother's ambitions were misguided, no doubt. But surely a thousand years of atonement is enough. The mother of these witches created a new type of pyromancy with a flame called the Chaos Flame. Mm. But that flame later became too powerful for any of the witches, and that fire spread throughout Isolith, killing many of the citizens. Most of the sister witches either died or transformed into demons after this occurrence, and only three of the sisters remained sentient. Quelana managed to escape completely by fleeing Isolith before the event took place. A second sister, Quelag, defends the entrance to Isolith. Her body has now been fused to that of a spider from the waist down. The third and final sister has also fused with the spider, but her body is weak and she is incapable of direct speech. She is unable to combat in Dark Souls 1, but she serves as a covenant leader. Her state of being closely resembles the spider that we find here in Dark Souls 3. And after picking up the pyromancy tome, you discover that it's Quilana's pyromancy tome. This discovery prompts the player to acknowledge the final resting place to this tragic storyline. Alright, enough about that, let's continue. So if we go down this stairway here, you're gonna notice that there's a few items in the lava. Now I don't recommend that you get these items yet. We will get them in a later video, but we don't have quite enough health to go running in there, gun ho. So if you are curious, inside of that lava, there's a toxic mist sorcery and a white hair talisman, which is a talisman made out of the fair lady's hair. And it has the special ability to be able to use miracles and pyromancies. But like I said, it's a bit out of our range for right now. So instead, we're just going to continue forward and we'll come back to them in a later video. We're going to go ahead and take care of these rats because uh, farther down the line here, we are going to find another illusionary wall with some more items. This here is the illusionary wall, and we're going to come across a chest. Now, this is not a mimic chest. Just notice the difference in the chain. The chain is shaped in the shape of a hook. We're going to find three large Titanite shards, which is excellent if you want to keep upgrading your weapon. In addition, we're going to have to fall down these couple of ledges. Be careful down below because there's a group of basilisks that could group up on you. Remember that if you stay within their fog, you will be killed instantly by their curse.
and down below we are going to find the Isolith Staff. The Isolith Staff is probably one of the best staffs in the game, uh, especially if you plan on using Dark Sorceries. It enhances the use of these Dark Sorceries by allowing them to scale with intelligence and faith. In addition, it also makes a good staff because of its length. The reason that that's a big deal in Dark Souls 3 is because melee sorceries such as the Farron Flash Sword or the Farron Great Sword or any other melee sorceries for that matter have an increased range. You don't really see this in Elden Ring because most of the staffs are on the shorter end and stubby, but the Farron Flash Sword actually comes out of the tip of the staff. So the longer that the staff is, the more range that that attack has. In addition, this staff also scales well when you put more than 60 points in intelligence. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to finish off these basilisks. Just be careful with them. Take them out slowly and don't let them group up on you. And this one should be the last one right here before we continue forward. Now, if you're not paying attention, you might go straight forward and miss this area to the left completely. Down here, we're going to meet an hostile NPC. It's not an invading NPC, so it's still going to be down there whether you're embered or not. But it is a repeat of Sorig, which we fought in the Karthus Catacombs. The only difference is that this time, he will drop his sword and his shield. They're really good weapons. It's an ultra great sword, and I think it's one of the better ones. Be careful with him. He's still really aggressive, and every time that he hits you, it hurts a bunch. If you like his armor, after you defeat them here, the Shrine Handmaiden will have them available for you if you want to purchase them. You'll also notice some more items here in the lake. Those items are going to be an ember and the pyromancy called Sacred Flame. If you're interested in any of the items that are still in the lake, you could probably research on some videos on how to do that. Um, but I think it'll be easier if we just come back for those items later on once we have more health and better gear to ward off fire. Instead, we are going to head back upstairs where we are going to encounter another Dark Knight. This time it has a greatsword. If you find this enemy too challenging, you could dash forward and get to the ladder on the other side. Once you climb that ladder, uh, the Dark Knight will not chase you. If you're running low on Estes Flask, I recommend doing it that way because you still have a bit of ways to go before the next bonfire. If you end up dying, you have the added hassle of having to come all the way back over here, killing all those basilisks and making your way up here. It could be a little bit of a long trip, so do what you're comfortable with. This Dark Knight can potentially drop his weapons and his armor, but if you're not farming any of those, just Head straight for the ladder.
and about three quarters the way up this ladder you'll notice an item here to the side all you have to do to get to that item is fall off the ledge from the top and then fall off that ledge in order to climb back up the ladder the dragon rider bow is probably the best standard bow but we're not going to be using our bow for much longer instead we're going to be switching out to a great bow so i wouldn't recommend upgrading it unless you like the bow gameplay once you walk out of this cave be careful that sentry turret is going to start shooting arrows at you so you got to get behind the cover of these rocks really quickly otherwise it will surprise attack you but after you get to the safety of the rocks you won't have to encounter that turret again it's pretty much safe all the way from here There are a few enemies left though, and since we are getting close, I recommend hiding them one by one so they don't group up on you. They're not particularly hard enemies, but there are a few of them grouped together. So do your best to kite them one by one and kill them off slowly but carefully. One more of these guys over here. And that's it. Continuing up this hill, there's going to be two little skeletons here. They're pretty easy, but you don't want to get too far up this hill because it'll trigger some of the bigger skeletons to come out and you don't want them to come out at the same time so take these out take these guys out slowly and then try to lure one of the bigger skeletons out at a time there's going to be two of them if you don't have a strike weapon like i do these enemies can be a little bit harder because they dash around so fast but by switching to a striking weapon, you can keep them staggered after your first hit. There you go. You can just continually stagger them like this and just keep them separated for an easy kill. And our last enemy is up here at the top of the hill. Same thing, just keep him staggered. And he's dispatched easily as well. And now we've made it to the big ballista. I like that they scattered a few of these dead giants around. It kind of makes you assume that this ballista was probably built and manned by these enslaved giants. And after pulling this lever here, we have finally disabled the ballista. Now we're going to step off over here, but before we do, let's take a look at what we, where we came from. That there is the smoldering lake. Down in that hole was the hole where we started off. And we can continue forward by stepping off this ledge here. Just make sure you have enough health. 
because you do take damage from that fall. You won't take any more damage after that initial fall though. And if you look carefully, there's a cave entrance here. This cave entrance will lead us to the location where we saw Horus off in the distance. In addition, there's going to be two crystal lizards. Try to take out the two lizards as quickly as possible. Otherwise, they will run into the cavern where Horus is at. And they'll initiate the fight preemptively. Now, when we enter here, we'll notice that Horus is hostile towards us. You have a choice to returning to Anri at this point and letting her know where Horus is located, or you could go ahead and kill Horus. But I recommend killing Horus. I think the game kind of makes you assume that Horus has become hollow, meaning that he has died too many times and has lost the ability to reason. He's stuck in this constant state of battle. So, if you head back to Anri and you let her know where Horus is without killing him, later on you'll find that Horus has killed Anri and you'll find Horus still alive in this location along with Anri's body. In order to avoid that, we want to kill off Horus right away and then return to Anri. After killing Horus, you'll pick up the Lewelin shield and his armor will be available for purchase from the Shrine Handmaiden as well. He's got pretty cool looking armor and it has really good stats as well. In addition, the shield is one of the better small shields and it's probably the only shield that I think is viable in the end game. We're going to go ahead and pick up the rest of these items as well. All upgrade materials for your weapons. There's one more item here. It's not very important, so you can skip this if you want to. But just to be thorough, let's go ahead and pick it up. It's farther down the lake where all of those giant crabs are at. You can avoid the fight with all the giant crabs simply by walking in this direction and most of them will avoid you. That's the hole we fell down at the beginning and we're going to turn left at this location here. I think most of the crabs are pretty far away and they won't aggro towards you. Here we go. This is the last item in this location. And after we pick up this chaos gem, we can homeward bone back to Firelink Shrine. So from here, we're going to go ahead and take out the boss for the Catacombs of Karthus. So go ahead and level up as much as you can. Level up your weapons and your character. Welcome home. And don't forget to turn in Speak all of your Estus shards desire. and your undead bone shards. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. Take nourishment from the next boss is souls. probably the easiest boss in Dark Souls. Uh, he is a giant skeleton. 
all you have to do to defeat him is break three of the gold bracelets that he has on his wrists. Farewell, Ashen One. Now this boss does not take any damage from any other sources, so you have to break those bracelets. These bracelets are particularly weak to striking weapons, and they are pretty hard to break without a striking weapon. So do your best. Uh, there is a few instances Ashen where the boss sure will strike, start to drag itself forward really quickly. <laughs> when he starts to do that, you want to keep up with the front of his body. Because if you don't, the darkness is going to consume you and you'll die instantly. So always stay within the lighted area. All right. Consider yourself warned and prepped up for this boss. It's relatively easy, so just enjoy the fight. Before we head over to him though, we're gonna go ahead and talk to Henri and let her know that Horus was found at the bottom of the smoldering lake. Here the game gives you a choice. You can either go ahead and tell Henri or say nothing. I will let you know though that if you do end up telling Henri, you leave out the part that you're the one that killed Horus. So go ahead and just tell her where you found him and she will give you... Goodness me. To think there'd be a lake so deep within these catacombs. What a relief. I knew that Horace was alive and wouldn't stray far. Thank you. We are both in your debt. This hardly expresses my gratitude, but it'll have to do for now. Please take it. And may the flames guide your way. The Ring of the Evil Eye. I will if you choose not to tell her anything, she will Thank still you. give you the Ring of the Evil Eye. But she will not give it to you until you meet her again in her next location. I will soon head to the lake. Thank you. And as I mentioned before, if you have not killed Horus and you tell her where Horus is at, the next time you go to Horus's location, Henri will be found dead there. And this is because Horus has gone full hollow and no longer recognizes anybody. If you remember, Yuria also mentioned that Henri has started to go hollow as well, and that's why she is a candidate for our spouse. Now let's go ahead and take out this boss.
And that is it. You can see this is kind of a disappointing fight. If it weren't for the really cool visuals, I would say it's probably one of the most disappointing. But it does in fact have some of the cooler visuals. So overall, I don't consider it to be too bad. Let's go ahead and light this bonfire. And we can go ahead and move forward. And look at that. Let's take a moment just to look at this scenery. This is definitely one of the most beautiful vistas here in Dark Souls 3. We are going to enter Irithyll of the Boreal Valley in the next video. So be sure to join us. Thank you for joining us again. And we will catch you on the next video. Bye bye.